There were really two interesting media stories, I think, at least two, that came out of Egypt. One was the use of Facebook and Twitter and the social networks that were being developed by the opposition to pull people on the street. That was truly extraordinary. I don't think there's anyone who would argue with the idea that that got the ball rolling. But you have to remember, it was, a, it was really a two or three year buildup of social networking to draw attention to police brutality, to draw attention to some of the human rights abuses that have gone undercovered by those of us in the Western media and, and un, unreported by the Egyptian government-controlled media and ignored by the government. But the level of distrust in the police that had built up and the level of, of a sense of a demand for justice exploded in Tahrir, and it really did motivate this revolution. So I think the critical role that these social networks played in, in spurring on the people to have the courage to take to the street was truly an extraordinary moment in the digital age. I think there's also a media story, Western media story, of the more retro media arriving in Tahrir Square with the big cameras mm -hmm. and the vans and the security guards and the whole sort of traveling circus that is network television from America. They got beat up. They were assaulted. Some of them very seriously, like Lara Logan. Mm -hmm. And some of them, um, you know, beat up uh, like the CNN crew that was, that was beat up. I think there's, those are sort of bookends mm -hmm. of two very different media stories. One is new and exciting, and the other is, is big old media being confronted on the street by the loyalists of the regime mm -hmm. and challenging them in their effort to try to get this story out to the world.